Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about retro video games. So today I thought I would make a list video because who doesn't love lists? It's my top five games on the PlayStation 1. The PlayStation 1 is a console that holds a special place in my heart. It's one of my favorite consoles of all time, and I'll tell you a bit about how I got into it later on in the video. But uh, I thought I'd just share my top five games. These aren't necessarily the best games on the console. These are just the ones that um, have the best memories for me and are the most important to me. So getting started, my first pick is Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo is a racing game developed by Sony Computer Entertainment. It was released for PlayStation in 1998 and became the best-selling game on the system. The game offers two modes, a basic arcade mode, which allows players to compete in a single race, and simulation mode, which was my favorite one, which was a larger scale competition where you could earn credits and prizes by winning multi-race championships. Oh god, I haven't played this game in so long. Please don't watch my embarrassing game footage. Now when Gran Turismo came out, or at least when I got the game, it was around the time I was first getting my driver's license. So I was particularly interested in cars and driving. Um, I'm less interested in racing games now as I drive all the time. But uh, at this time, this game was super interesting to me and really held my attention. It taught me a little bit about cars. I really liked that there was a licensing system in the game, so you had to get certain licenses in order to race on different tracks. Uh, the soundtrack also particularly stands out in my memory. I know it featured Garbage, who is a band that I was super into at the time. Although I remember that the soundtrack wasn't overly long, it was only 12 or 13 songs, which could get repetitive considering how much time you could sink into that game. And I did definitely play a lot of Gran Turismo when I was young. It was a bit hard when making this list not just to list 5 JRPGs. This is the console that introduced me to them and there are a ton of strong ones on it. But my second pick is Star Ocean Second Story. Star Ocean Second Story was developed by Triace and released for PlayStation in 1999. Though it's the second in the Star Ocean series, it was the first to be released in North America. It follows the story of Claude Kenny, an ensign in the Earth Federation, something that seems to borrow heavily from Star Trek, and Rena Lanford, a young woman on the technologically primitive planet he travels to. It's your general Save the World fantasy fair, but it really stands out due to its active combat system where you can control a party of four players, its great crafting, and private actions that let you build relationships with the other people in your party. It's also got a killer soundtrack. I can't even remember exactly where I got Star Ocean or under what circumstances or even how I heard of it, but it turned out to be one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. Uh, a couple things that really stood out to me are that there was two different protagonists that you could choose between. Uh, one was male and one was female, and depending on which one you chose, the game events you experienced were a little bit different. You could recruit different party members based on who you were playing, so it offered a little bit of uh, replayability that way because there was always something new to discover. Uh, the game has a really cool crafting system that I really liked. It has what's basically an Iron Chef tournament inside of it, which I thought was amazing. Um, and another thing is that there are these things called private actions, where when you go into a town, you can um, talk to your companions privately. Like, they all go off and do their own thing, rather than everyone being together. So you have these little uh, private conversations with your companions, and you can sort of build relationships and friendships with them and get to know them more. And overall, this was just a really, really charming, really fun game. There was, uh, it was 
quite deep. It took quite a long time to play. Um, just between all the little things, there was pickpocketing, there was always someone to talk to, there was always little secrets to figure out. Um, it was just a lot of fun, and uh, to this day, I think it still holds up, especially visually, since they use sprites for the characters rather than polygons. So the next game on my list is a platformer, and since there are a number of good platformers on the PlayStation, it took a little bit of thinking to decide which one I wanted to include. I really like Crash Bandicoot, I really like Spyro the Dragon. Uh, the PlayStation and also the N64 really started to play around with 3D environments, and I thought about it for a while and realized that I really prefer 2D platformers, which is why I chose Rayman. Rayman was developed by Ubisoft and released in 1995 as one of the launch titles for the PlayStation, though it was not an exclusive. It's a 2D platformer that follows Rayman who is on a journey to save the world by releasing captured Electunes and recovering the Great Protune. As he progresses through levels, he is granted new abilities. The game is very bright and colorful with a memorable soundtrack and level design featuring themed worlds like Bandland, where platforms are made up of musical instruments. The lead developer was Michael Ansel, who also made another of my favorite games, Beyond Good and Evil. Rayman is just a really fun and really charming game. It's bright, it's colorful, it's happy, uh, there's nothing too dark in it. It's just a lot of fun. Um, I love that the character models are a lot larger than you get in most platformers, so just, I don't know, everything seems larger than life, and there's a lot of cool abilities that you can get. I seem to remember that when you start as Rayman, you can't use your feet or your hands, and you, you gain the abilities as you go through the game, which I always thought was pretty funny. And another thing about Rayman is that it's a series that to this day is still going strong. While some of the other games on my list have either not made other games, or at least not made good versions of other games. Uh, the last Rayman that came out was excellent, so I'm happy to see that's a character and a game series that's still kicking around. So I'm dipping back into the JRPGs for the next one, although this one is more of a hybrid, sort of JRPG, action, horror. It's Parasite Eve. Parasite Eve was developed by Square and released in 1998. It lets you play as New York City police officer, Aya Brea, who is trying to catch a woman who can make humans spontaneously combust. Aya, for a mysterious reason she needs to figure out, is immune to this. The game, which is based on a novel, plays around with the idea of mitochondria evolving and taking over the rest of the body. The game takes us through a number of New York landmarks and employs a very fun action role-playing combat system that's one of the most interesting I've played. So I remember when I got Parasite Eve, it was for Christmas one year, and because we were having family over to my house, I couldn't really play it because I had to, you know, be social and all that. So instead, I just left the opening cinematic looping on the television all day. Day. I was just enthralled with this. It was so beautiful. I still think it looks pretty good. It was just really exciting. It had good music. The characters looked pretty good. Um, it was something that just sort of sticks in my memory. The thought of just watching that cinematic over and over and over all day. I'm sure everyone was really pissed off with me by the end of Christmas, but I was so happy when I finally got to play it. And it is a really, really fun game. I think that the mechanics, the sort, the sort of more action-oriented RPG, really worked well. And I was just playing this game sometime last year, and I still find it a lot of fun to play, though the polygons and the characters don't look very good. The actual uh, core gameplay and the story and everything is still great. Okay, so the last game on my list, it's not the best game on the system, it's not my favorite game on the system, and it's definitely not the one that holds up the most, especially not visually. However, it is the reason I got a PlayStation 1 in the first place. It's Final Fantasy VII.
Final Fantasy VII was developed by Square and released in 1997. It's an RPG that follows Cloud Strife, a mercenary who's assisting an eco-terrorist group and fighting the very people he used to work for. Soon we find out that the entire planet is at stake. The game is full of memorable characters, the Materia system, which is one of my favorite systems for magic in an RPG, summons, and even some minigames. Honestly, I feel like I probably don't need to summarize this game for anyone watching. Sephiroth, Tifa, Red, Genova, yada yada yada. So I'm sure many people in my age group have a similar story about Final Fantasy VII, but uh, what got me into it was the television commercial that they had for it. And I remember seeing that and just thinking like, wow, can a game really do that? And a friend of mine at the time, Jen, she had a PlayStation and she had Final Fantasy. I went over to her house and played it once and she was always talking about it and I decided that it had to be mine. I needed a PlayStation. I needed Final Fantasy VII. Um, I hadn't really had a console since the NES. I still had my NES at that time, but I had sort of missed all the consoles between then. I had mostly been playing computer games. So Final Fantasy VII is really what's responsible for getting me back into consoles, because after the PlayStation 1, I got most of the consoles that came out, and I still uh, prefer playing on console, depending on the game. So this was just uh, a sort of big part of my gaming history. I remember when I got it, when I decided I needed one, um, uh, my mom was going to pick me up one from work, or on her way home from work, and she went to Costco to get it, and she got me the PlayStation, and she got me Final Fantasy VII, and um, the next day, oh no, what a coincidence, I'm horribly sick, <laughs> I can't go to school today. So, <laughs> rather than going to school, I stayed home and I played Final Fantasy VII. Now something that I did not know since I didn't have a console uh, since the NES was that PlayStation games need memory cards. And when I had asked her, when I told her what to buy me, I hadn't included a memory card in that. But I didn't want to wait for it and I didn't want to let that stop me, so I played Final Fantasy VII anyway. I played it all day. I played it for about Mm, six or seven hours she was gonna be home soon like she was gonna be home within the hour and then I got to a place where this big like house like thing with legs just killed everyone and it was game over and I lost my seven hours of progress and I had to start all over again when she finally got home with the memory card uh, that's just a memory that's just gonna stick in my brain I think for my entire life. Um, so anyway, obviously Final Fantasy VII is a game that means a lot to me. It got me back into consoles, it really got me into RPGs and JRPGs, and uh, yeah, it means a lot to me. So those are my top five games on the PlayStation 1. Feel free to tell me what your top five games are in the comments below. Uh, shares and likes are always appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.